The African Union Mission in Somalia is an active, regional peacekeeping mission operated by the African Union with the approval of the United Nations Security Council. It is mandated to support transitional governmental structures, implement a national security plan, train the Somali security forces, and to assist in creating a secure environment for the delivery of humanitarian aid. As part of its duties, AMISOM also supports the federal government of Somalia's forces in their battle against al Shabaab militants. AMISOM was created by the African Union's Peace and Security Council on 19 January 2007 with an initial six-month mandate. On 21 February 2007 the United Nations Security Council approved the mission's mandate. Subsequent six-monthly renewals of AMISOM mandate by the African Union Peace and Security Council have also been authorized by the United Nations Security Council. The duration of AMISOM's mandate has been extended in each period that it has been up for review, lastly in July 2018. The current mandate expires on 31 May 2019, with an interim goal to reduce troop levels to a maximum of 20,626 by 28 February 2019. Topic. Background Amisom replaced and subsumed the IGAD Peace Support Mission in Somalia IGASOM, which was a proposed intergovernmental authority on development protection and training mission to Somalia approved by the African Union on September 14, 2006. IGASOM was also approved by the United Nations Security Council on the 6th of December 2006. IGASOM was originally proposed for immediate implementation in March 2005 to provide peacekeeping forces for the latest phase of the Somali civil war. At that time, the Islamic Courts Union (ICU) had not yet taken control of Mogadishu, and most hopes for national unity lay with the Transitional Federal Government (TFG), which had organized in Nairobi, Kenya in 2004 and were planning to establish a provisional capital in Baidoa, Bay Region, Somalia. By May 2006, the situation was radically different, as the ICU had recently been engaged by the Alliance for the Restoration of Peace and Counter-Terrorism or ARPCT and was fighting for control of Mogadishu in the Second Battle of Mogadishu. By June, they had established control of the capital. Fighting began to spread to other parts of the nation as the ICU gained ground. Plans for IGASOM continued, though by July there were indications of opposition from the ICU, who saw the initiative as a U.S.-backed, Western means to curb the growth of their Islamic movement. Until December 2006, the UN Security Council had imposed an arms embargo on the group, but the embargo was partially lifted and a mandate for IGASOM issued on 6 December 2006 for six months. Topic. Authorization. Topic. On 21 February 2007, the United Nations Security Council authorized the African Union to deploy a peacekeeping mission with a mandate of six months. In March 2007, Ugandan military officials arrived on the ground in Somalia. On 20 August 2007, the United Nations Security Council extended the African Union's authorization to continue deploying AMISOM for a further six months and requested the Secretary General to explore the option of replacing AMISOM with a United Nations peacekeeping operation to Somalia. Most recently, on 30 July 2018, the Security Council unanimously approved Resolution 2431, authorizing member states of the African Union to maintain the deployment of AMISOM until the 31 May 2019, with an interim goal of reducing the number of troops to 20,626 by 28 February 2019, or further depending on the capabilities of Somali security forces. <laughs> Mission planning Scope of the mission Topic. IGASOM was expected to eventually reach 8,000 troops, with an expected cost of $335 million for the first year. According to UN Security Council Resolution 1725, states bordering Somalia would not be eligible to deploy troops under IGASOM. 
The remaining non-bordering IGAD member nations include Sudan, Eritrea, and Uganda. Because of the objection of the burden falling on these three nations alone and the rivalry between Ethiopia and Eritrea, the mission was expanded to include other member states of the African Union. AMISM has a different composition. As proposed, it is to comprise an initial three battalions, growing to a total of nine battalions of 850 troops each, which would serve for an initial stabilization period of six months. The mission was to be modeled after the African Union mission in Burundi AMIB. Topic. ICU resistance Topic. As early as March 25, 2005 Sheikh Hassan Dahir Awais of the Union of Islamic Courts warned any peacekeepers would be unwelcome in the country. He was quoted by the BBC as saying, We will fight fiercely to the death any intervention force that arrives in Somalia. Yet at the time, the ICU was not the political or military force it was to become later. Faced with the ascendancy of the ICU after taking over the capital in the Second Battle of Mogadishu between May and June, 2006, UN watchers were growing concerned with the level of hostility of the ICU towards the proposed IGASOM mission, though IGAD and the ICU met and published a cordial and formal communique committing the ICU to the IGAD plans on December 2. By the time United Nations Security Council Resolution 1725 was passed on December 6, the ICU was openly and militantly opposed to peacekeepers entering Somalia, and vowed to treat any peacekeepers as hostile forces. Because of regional divisions, there were also UIC resistance to allowing Ethiopian troops be part of the mission. Ethiopia, for its part, was leery of allowing Eritrean troops to be members of the IGAD peacekeeping force. In the face of ICU threats, Uganda, the only IGAD members who had openly offered to send forces a battalion, withdrew in the face of concerns of the present feasibility of the mission. In Uganda's defense, the crisis does not allow for peacekeepers when there are active hostilities conducted with heavy weapons see Battle of Baidoa. On January 1, 2007, after the defeat of the ICU in various battles in December 2006, Uganda again renewed its pledge of a battalion of troops. Between Uganda and Nigeria, which is a member state of the African Union, but not of IGAD, there was a pledge of a total of 8,000 peacekeepers. Ghana, Rwanda and Tanzania were reported to be considering sending forces. Topic. Gathering support Topic. Following the defeat of the Islamic Courts Union in December 2006 to January 2007 the international community began to gather both fiscal commitments as well as military forces for the mission. Nations of the African Union outside the IGAD community were drawn on to provide support. On January 17, 2007, the U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Michael Ranberger, said the U.S. pledged $40 million to support the deployment of a peacekeeping force for Somalia. By January 20, the European Union followed with a pledge of 15 million euros. On January 19, 2007, the mission was formally defined and approved by the African Union at the 69th meeting of the Peace and Security Council. On January 22, 2007, Malawi agreed to send a half battalion to a battalion ranging widely anywhere between approximately 400 to 1,200 troops for a peacekeeping mission to Somalia. On January 24, 2007 Nigeria pledged a battalion a force between 770 and 1,100 troops to join the Somali peacekeeping mission. On February 1, 2007 Burundi committed to the peacekeeping mission, pledging up to 1,000 troops. By March 27, it was confirmed that 1,700 Burundian peacekeepers would be sent to Somalia. On February 2, 2007, the United Nations Security Council welcomed the advent of the African Union and IGAD led peacekeeping mission. On February 5, 2007, Tanzania offered to train Somali government troops, but not to deploy peacekeepers. On February 9, 2007, a gathering of 800 Somali demonstrators in North Mogadishu, where Islamist support was strongest, burned U.S., Ethiopian, and Ugandan flags in protest of the proposed peacekeeping mission. A masked representative of the resistance group, the popular resistance movement in the land of the two migrations, said Ethiopian troops would be attacked in their hotels. The same group had made a video warning peacekeepers to avoid coming to Somalia. By this date, Uganda, Nigeria, Ghana, Malawi and Burundi had committed to the peacekeeping mission, but the total force was about half of the proposed 8,000-strong force. 
Uganda had pledged 1,400 troops and some armoured vehicles for a mission lasting up to nine months, and the O had pledged $11.6 million. On February 16, 2007, Uganda announced it would deploy 1,500 well seasoned troops as early as Saturday, February 17, 2007, under the command of Major General Levi Karanga. The troops had been training for two years in preparation for the mission. The Burundian troops were technically ready to go in early August 2007, but equipment promised by the United States and France had not yet arrived. On December 23, 2007, an advance force of 100 Burundians was deployed and another 100 soldiers arrived on 24 December 2007. By late 2008, 1,700 Burundian soldiers were deployed to Mogadishu. Topic. Expanding role Topic. In a closed-door meeting in Kampala on of July 2010, O ministers agreed to expand the mission's mandate from a peacekeeping focus to a peace enforcement focus that would engage al-Shabaab more directly. The decision came soon after deadly bomb attacks in the Ugandan capital. A few days later in response to UN pressure, the O agreed not to expand the mandate but did allow preemptive strikes against Al-Shabaab and promised more troops from other African countries. On July 23, 2010, Djibouti and Guinea pledged troops to Amisom. On the 17th of September 2010, an O envoy said in Nairobi that Amisom S size had grown from 6,300 to 7,200 troops after an additional battalion from Uganda joined the force. In December 2010, the UN backed Amisom in increasing the mission's authorized size to 12,000 UN Security Council Resolution 1964 of of December 2010 and at the same time reports indicated that Uganda had promised an extra 1,800 personnel, with Burundi an extra 850. In March 2011, Burundi sent 1,000 extra soldiers to Amisom, bringing the total number of Burundi troops deployed to 4,400. AFP, reported in Africa Research Bulletin, said Burundian military chief General Godefroid Nyambare said on 14 March 2011 the soldiers had been deployed a week before. In February 2012, the UN Security Council boosted the number of troops deployed from 12,000 to 17,731. The approval comes after a series of recent successes against Al-Shabaab fighters who had previous positions throughout the central and southern areas of the country. During the same month, O Commander Fred Muhisha suggested that Al-Shabaab was at its weakest and would likely implode in the not-so-distant future owing to successive military defeats that it suffered as well as an exodus toward the Arabian Peninsula of hundreds of the group's fighters. Due to the successful military operations against the Islamists, the United States has also been stepping up efforts to train and equip the Amisom troops in a bid to stamp out the Al Shabaab insurgency and limit its influence. In October 2011, a coordinated operation between the Somali military and the Kenyan military began against the Al Shabaab group of militants in southern Somalia. The mission is officially being led by the Somali army, with the Kenyan forces providing a support role. On 12 November, the Kenyan government agreed to rehat its forces under Amisom command, and later announced in March 2012 that it would be sending 5,000 troops to join the coalition. Analysts expect the additional O troop reinforcements to help the Somali authorities gradually expand their territorial control. The East African reported in March 2012 on reorganization of Amisom's headquarters and sector commands. Personnel J1 would be led by the O, with Kenya taking responsibility for intelligence J2 and logistics J4, Uganda operations J3 and engineer J8, Burundi plans J5 and communications IS J6, Sierra Leone training J7 and Djibouti CIMIC J9. There would also be four sectors, Uganda responsible for Sector 1 the Shabels and Bonadir, Sector 2 the Jubas run by Kenya, Sector 3 Burundi covering Ghetto, Bay, and Bakul, and sector from which Ethiopia forces were withdrawing from to be directed by Djibouti. Following the Westgate shooting in Nairobi by Al-Shabaab operatives, the Ethiopian government halted its plans to withdraw completely out of Somalia. 
It instead indicated that it would continue to support the Somali armed forces and their Amisom allies. In November 2013, the Ethiopian government announced that it would integrate its troops that are deployed in Somalia into the Amisom multinational force. Somalia S. Foreign Minister Fauzia Haji Youssef welcomed the decision, stating that the move would galvanize Amisom's campaign against the insurgent group. She also emphasized the importance of collaboration between Somalia and Ethiopia. The Ethiopian authorities' announcement came a month after a failed October bombing attempt by al-Shabaab in the Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa, and a week after Ethiopia received a renewed terrorism threat from the insurgent group. According to Ethiopian Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Ambassador Dina Mufti, the Ethiopian military's decision to join Amisom is intended to render the peacekeeping operation more secure. Analysts also suggested that the move was primarily motivated by financial considerations, with the Ethiopian FOSS's operational costs now slated to be under Amisom's allowance budget. It is believed that the Ethiopian military S long experience in Somali territory, its equipment such as helicopters, and the potential for closer coordination will help the Allied forces advance their territorial gains. On the other hand, there is a certain amount of unease following Ethiopia's entry into Amisom given local animosity originating from Ethiopia's heavy-handed intervention in 2006. There are also fears that al-Shabaab could use Somali animosity towards Ethiopia as a rallying cry and to recruit more members. In December 2013, the U.S. government established a military coordination cell in Mogadishu at the request of Amisom and the Somali government. The unit consists of a small team of fewer than five advisors, including planners and communicators between Amisom and the Somali authorities. It is intended to provide consultative and planning support to the Allied forces in order to enhance their capacity and to promote peace and security throughout the country and wider region. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership and command the head of mission is the special representative of the chairperson of the African Union Commission to Somalia, or SRCC. On 7 October 2015 Francisco Caetano José Madeira, of Mozambique, was appointed to this position, replacing Maman Sambo Sidikau of Niger. Force commanders Deputy force commanders Topic Topic Chiefs of Staff Topic Topic Spokespersons Topic Topic Force Organization Topic Topic Sectors Topic On the fifteenth of October twenty eleven Kenyan forces crossed the border into Somalia to attack Al Shabaab. Subsequently UN Security Council Resolution 2036 of 22 February 2012 authorized an increase in Amisom troop numbers to 17,731 to incorporate the Kenyans. This resolution took effect from mid-2012. At this time the initial Ugandan and Burundian Amisom forces had been successful in largely clearing Al-Shabaab militants from Mogadishu and the force was organized into new sectors. Sector 1, headquartered in Mogadishu and predominantly the domain of the Ugandan contingent, covered the Bonadir, Middle Shabel and Lower Shabel regions. Sector 2, headquartered in Kismayu and predominantly KDF responsibility, with the anticipated Sierra Leone contingent, covered the Ghetto, Middle Juba and Lower Juba regions. Sector 3, headquartered in Baidoa and predominantly the responsibility of the Burundian contingent, covering the Bay and Bakul regions. Sector 4, headquartered in Belit Wayne and the responsibility of the Djiboutian contingent, covering the Haran region. Later, UN Security Council Resolution 2124 of the 12th of November 2013 authorized a troop increase to 22,126 through inclusion of an Ethiopian contingent. 
This took effect in January 2014, when the sector organization was modified to Sector 1 Mogadishu, Bonadir and Lower Shabelle regions UPDF contingent Sector 2 Dabhi, Lower and Middle Juba regions KDF contingent, with the Sierra Leone contingent operating in a Sector Kismayu until these forces left. During January 2016 Ethiopian troops deployed to Kismayo. Sector 3 Baidoa, Bay, Bakul and Ghetto regions Ethiopian contingent Sector 4 Belit Wain, Hiran and Galgaduid regions Jibushan contingent Sector 5 Johar, Middle Shabelle region Burundi contingent in January 2017 Kismayo was mentioned as a separate sector Sector 6 under Colonel Paul Jima on the 22nd of November 2017 AMISOM's Twitter feed announced that Colonel Frederick Ndeyasaba of Burundi was replacing Colonel Paul K Jima of the Kenya Defence Forces KDF as Sector 6 commander and described this command as a multinational sector composed of Burundian Kenyan and Ethiopian troops based in Kismayo Topic. Contingents Topic. Topic. Ugandan contingents Topic. A. Commanders B. Battle groups From the first deployment of Ugandan troops during March 2007, which saw a contingent of two battalions sent to Mogadishu, the UPDF contribution to AMISOM had by 2015 expanded to three battle groups, each of two or three battalions. The following table lists what details are known of the Ugandan battle groups, or UGABAG, deployed under AMISOM. The information presented has been collected from Ugandan press reports largely gleaned from the website, alafrica.com, and news reports on the AMISOM website. Topic. Burundi contingents. Topic. A. Commanders B. Battalions Burundi sent its 1st Battalion to Mogadishu to join Ugandan troops in Amisom in December 2007. It took until October 2008 to build the national contingent up to two battalions, due in part to a lack of equipment. But subsequently the Burundi contingent increased to a 6 battalion force. The Burundi force commitment is frequently cited as 5,432 troops, which would align with a contingent of six battalions of about 850 personnel each, the UN standard, together with headquarters and support elements. One battalion. Arrived December 2007. Two battalion. Deployed mid-October 2008. Seven battalion. Lieutenant. Call. Pontian Hakazamana. Served during 2011 and involved in the battle for Mogadishu. 8 Battalion, 9 Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Pascal Hakazamana. Served during 2011 and involved in the battle for Mogadishu. 10 Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Agid Nitabara. Served during 2011 and involved in the battle for Mogadishu. 11 Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Gregoire Ndakumazambo. Served during 2011 and involved in the battle for Mogadishu. 12 Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Bimenyamana. Served during 2011 and involved in the battle for Mogadishu. 26 Battalion, returned home at the end of May 2015. 27 Battalion, returned home at the end of May 2015. 28 Battalion, returned home in October 2015 after 14 month deployment. 29 Battalion. Returned home in November 2015, replaced by 35 Battalion. 30 Battalion. Returned home in November 2015, replaced by 36 Battalion. 31 Battalion, 828 personnel. Returned home 28 May 2016. 32 Battalion. Maj. John Manarakiza. Returned home during July 2016 after year-long deployment. 33 Battalion Maj. Richard Nikoyajais. Returned home during July 2016 after year-long deployment. 34 Battalion Maj. Sylvain Kiniji. Deployed October 2015 replacing 28 Battalion, and returned home February 2017. 35 Battalion. Deployed November 2015, replacing 29 Battalion. 36 Battalion. Deployed November 2015, replacing 30 Battalion. 
37 Battalion Maj. Adolf Kagaruka. Deployed May 2016, replacing 31 Battalion? Returned home June 2017. 38 Battalion, 850 personnel. Deployed July 2016, replacing 32 Battalion 39 Battalion, 850 personnel. Deployed July 2016, replacing 33 Battalion 40, 41 and 42 Battalions were scheduled for deployment in November 2016 but this was delayed. There was speculation this delay was a result of disappointment within Burundi over delays in EU payments in support of AMISM and the suggestion by the EU that payments could be made directly to the Burundian troops rather than through the Burundi government, or domestic political tensions within Burundi arising from the president running for a third term of office. By January 2017 the Burundi government threatened to withdraw its forces from Somalia altogether, arguing that these were a national contingent and not mere mercenaries, as would be suggested by the troops receiving payment directly from any third party. Subsequently agreement was reached on the question of EU payments and it was announced the Burundi contingents would remain with AMISM in Somalia. 40 Battalion Maj. Leonidas Singarankabo, also given as Maj. Ladislas Singarankabo. Deployed February 2017, replacing 34 Battalion, and departed in March 2018. 41 Battalion Maj. Zenon Nasinzira. 42 Battalion 43 Battalion Maj. Chartier Nyandwi. Deployed June 2017, replacing 37 Battalion. 44 Battalion 45 Battalion Lieutenant. Colonel Filbert Hadingamana. Arrived in Somalia August 2017, replacing 39 battalion, and to be deployed to Johar. Topic. Ethiopian contingents Topic. Topic. Kenyan contingents Topic. Topic. Jabushan contingents Topic. Topic. Sierra Leone contingent Topic. Leobit 1 Lieutenant. Call. Abubakar Kanta, 850 strong, served in Sector 2 under Kenyan command, later in Sector Kismayu under their own command. Leobit 1 eventually left Somalia for home only in January 2015. Leobit 2 Lieutenant. Colonel George Mahmoud Bangura was announced and intended to relieve Leobit 1 early in 2014. However, due to unexplained delays this 2nd Battalion completed 1st phase training only in January 2014, with planned 2nd and 3rd phase training scheduled to last a further three months each. It was then planned to relieve the 1st contingent in August 2014 but an Ebola virus outbreak in West Africa caused further concerns. During October 2014 it was announced the second contingent had been in isolation for four months and cleared of Ebola virus, but this was quickly followed by an announcement from the Sierra Leone Chief of Defense Staff that the contingent would not travel to Somalia. Later, during April 2018, a formed police unit of 160 Sierra Leone police was deployed to Amisom under the command of Mustafa Solomon Kamba. Topic. Civil staff. The civilian staff of AMISM has been operating from Nairobi, Kenya since 2008 due to the security situation in Mogadishu. As of now, they number approximately 81 personnel. Since the beginning of 2011 AMISM and TFG has taken control over several strategic places in Mogadishu after several offensives against Al-Shabaab. With the expanded control over the capital Amisom on 16 May 2011 moved the civil staff and police officers to Mogadishu. This includes special representative of the chairperson of the African Union Commission for Somalia SRCC, Ambassador Bubakar Gosu Diara and Deputy SRCC, Honorable Wafola Wamunianyi. Much of the key logistical support for the force is provided by the United Nations Support Office for AMISOM UNSOA, a field mission of the UN Secretariat Department of Field Support. The civilian component is supervised by the Special Representative of the Chairperson of the African Union Commission for Somalia SRCC, which is represented on the ground by Ambassador Mahamat Saleh Anadif, who oversees the political, civil, humanitarian, gender and public information departments. 
Ambassador Epiphany Kabushimai Tawana is the civilian chief of staff. The chief administrative officer Timothy Kaguti heads the support component of the mission which includes administration personnel, finance and budgeting, logistics and procurement among other issues. The police contingent, which provides capacity building, both institutional and individual in support of the Somali police force, is headed by the Amisom Police Commissioner Anand Pillay. Training for contingents The United States has provided extensive training for contingents headed for Somalia. In the first half of 2012, Force Recon Marines from Special Purpose Marine Air Ground Task Force 12 SPMAGTF-12 trained soldiers from the Uganda People's Defense Force. In the northern spring of 2012 March-April to May, Marines from SPMAGTF-12 also trained Burundian soldiers. In April and May, members of Task Force Raptor, 3rd Squadron, 124th Cavalry Regiment of the Texas Army National Guard, took part in a separate training mission with the BNDF in Mudabugu, Burundi. SPMAGTF-12 has also sent its trainers to Djibouti, another nation involved in the Somali mission, to work with an army unit there. At the same time, U.S. troops have assisted in training the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces in preparation for their deployment to Somalia later this year. In June 2012, U.S. Army Africa Commander Major General David R. Hogg spoke encouragingly of the future of Sierra Leone's forces in conjunction with Kenya. As of June 2012, the RSLAF troops have not yet deployed. The Sierra Leonean Defense Minister said on June 23, 2012, that the battalion might depart for the Horn sometime in September 2012. In addition, a significant amount of support to AMISOM has been provided by private companies. Bancroft Global Development, headquartered on Washington's Embassy Row, employs about 40 South African and European trainers who work with AMISOM's Ugandan and Burundian troops. Bancroft director Michael Stock told the East African that these mentors are embedded with AMISOM units in Mogadishu and southern and central Somalia. They coach commanders on how to predict and defeat the tactics which foreign fighters bring from outside East Africa and teach to Al Shabaab. Bancroft does not receive funding directly from the U.S. government but is instead paid by AMISOM, which is then reimbursed by the State Department for these outlays. The Associated Press reports that Bancroft has been paid $12.5 million for its work in Somalia since 2008. A security analyst in Somalia listed three primary private security companies, private military companies operating in Mogadishu. Dincorp, who provide logistical support in the Somali capital, Bancroft International, who provide training to TFG and AMISOM personnel, as well as assisting with community service delivery, and Pacific Architects and Engineers. Topic deployment topic topic Troop numbers topic Asterisk The reason why troops from Sierra Leone were withdrawn was the inability to rotate in fresh soldiers, due to the Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone and the surrounding region. In response, Ethiopia has offered to replace the contingent from Sierra Leone with Ethiopian reinforcements. The total number of personnel under AMISOM including armed personnel and civil staff is reportedly around 22,126. Before joining AMISOM in January 2014, the Ethiopian Defense Force was believed to have an estimated 8,000 troops in the country. It is also believed that some Ethiopian troops in Somalia operate independently from AMISOM. Likewise, Kenya had troops deployed in Somalia independently before they were brought under the AMISOM umbrella. Cameroon, Mali, Senegal, and Zambia were known to have a total of four personnel inserted into AMISOM. However, it is not known whether they were security or civil personnel. Furthermore, there are also a small number of police officers from Burundi, Gambia, and Zimbabwe that are inserted into AMISOM topic casualties and major incidents topic According to SIPRI, 1,039 AMISOM soldiers were killed in action between January 1, 2009, and December 31, 2013, with an additional 69 fatalities in 2014 per AMISOM bringing the total to 1,108 dead from 2009 through 2014. Topic March 2007 to February 2011 Topic AMISOM medical facility records showed 110 Ugandan and 95 Burundian soldiers had died between March 2007 and February 2011 in Somalia. Another 798 AMISOM soldiers were wounded. 
Some of the most deadliest incidents were, February 22, 2009 – 11 Burundian soldiers were killed and 15 wounded in a double suicide attack on their base in Mogadishu. July 23–29, 2009 – An epidemic of leptospirosis hit the Burundian and Ugandan military camps in Mogadishu killing three Burundian and two Ugandan soldiers. Another 18 Burundian soldiers were placed in quarantine. About 50 Burundian and 17 Ugandan soldiers were evacuated for medical treatment to Nairobi, Kenya. September 17, 2009 – 17 soldiers were killed and 29 wounded in a suicide attack by Islamist rebels on the headquarters of the African Union Force in Mogadishu. At least four civilians were also killed and more than 10 wounded. Twelve of those killed were Burundian soldiers and five were Ugandan. Among the dead was the Amisom deputy commander Maj. General Juvenal Nyanguruza, from Burundi. Also, one of the wounded was Amisom commander Gen. Nathan Muhisha, from Uganda. February 23 to March 4, 2011 53 to 82 astronomical units troops were killed in clashes with Al Shabaab fighters during an offensive in Mogadishu. 190 other Amisom troops were also wounded. In addition, a Burundian soldier was captured alive by militants. These were, at the time, the heaviest losses since Amisom deployed. 43 of those killed were confirmed as Burundian soldiers and 10 as Ugandans. Also, 110 of the wounded were Burundians. Beside the 43 killed in action, four Burundian soldiers were declared missing in action. Topic. March to December 2011 Topic. March 5 – A Burundian soldier was injured by the controlled explosion of a car bomb of Al-Shabaab militants. Amisom forces won back the rebel-controlled town of Bulohao with the help of forces loyal to the Somali government. March 17 – Six O soldiers were killed in heavy clashes between Somali government troops backed by Amisom in Mogadishu and Al-Shabaab militants. May 12 to June 11, 12 astronomical units soldiers were killed, including seven Ugandans, and 13 plus injured during the Bakara Market Offensive in Mogadishu. July 29, four Ugandan soldiers were killed and five wounded during clashes in Mogadishu. An Amisom tank was also destroyed. August 1, at least two Amisom soldiers were killed and others wounded in a suicide attack on an Amisom base in Mogadishu. October 10 – One Amisom soldier was killed and six injured in an operation in northeast of Mogadishu. The former Pasta Factory and Critical Junction, ex-Control Balad, are after that in government hands. October 20 – At least 70 Burundian soldiers were killed and their bodies filmed and paraded by Al-Shabaab following the Battle of Danile, Mogadishu. An unknown number of soldiers were wounded. One O armored vehicle was also destroyed in the fighting. October 23 – Two O soldiers were wounded when a suicide bomber blew himself up near a convoy of O peacekeepers in Mogadishu. October 29 – Al-Shabaab militants attacked an Amisom compound injuring two astronomical units soldiers in the Somali capital Mogadishu. December 25 – A Burundian soldier was killed by an improvised explosive device, and two others were wounded in Mogadishu. 2012. Topic. January 14 – A Ugandan soldier was killed by a Somali soldier in Mogadishu. The reasons for the act are unknown. January 20 – Two O soldiers were injured in a military offensive to consolidate security in Mogadishu. March 2 – Two Ugandan soldiers were injured during the capture of the city of Masla. March 29 – Four Burundian soldiers were wounded in a battle on Danile district on Mogadishu. August 31 to 5 Kenyan soldiers were missing after the capture of Mito. A search and rescue was mounted. Three other soldiers were injured. Three of the soldiers were found alive two days later, but the fate of the other two soldiers remained unknown. A few days later, their bodies were shown in a video posted by the insurgents. September 19 two Amisom troops were injured during the capture of Jana Kabdala town located 50 km to the west of the port city of Kismayo in the lower Juba region. October 24 four Ugandan soldiers were killed by a bomb while advancing towards Baidoa. October 4 of March 29 Ugandan soldiers were killed and seven wounded in an attack by two suicide bombers on an Amisom base in Mogadishu. 
November 19 – At least two Kenyan soldiers who are part of the African Union o peacekeeping force in Somalia were killed in Garissa, a base for security forces in Kenya fighting insurgents in neighboring Somalia, Kenya's army spokesman said on Monday. 2014 March 11, 2014 At least two Amisom peacekeepers were injured as Amisom and Somali troops advanced into areas close to coastal town of Barawe and Coriolis. March 18, 2014 At least three Djiboutian soldiers were killed in a hotel attack on the town of Bulo Bird. April 5, 2014 During joint Amisom Somali incursion to liberate the town of Wabha, Al Shabaab fighters claimed to have killed Ethiopian troops from Amisom and posted photos on social media showing fighters posing over two unidentified bodies in uniform with Amisom patches, Ethiopian script, helmets, and various weapons. May 24, 2014 Three Ugandan peacekeepers died in an attack by 13 Al Shabaab militants on the Somali parliament alongside four Somali soldiers and a police officer. In addition, four Ugandans were wounded but in stable condition. The attack started with a car bomb driven into the parliament building's entrance and ended with 11 of the attackers killed while the other two detonated suicide bombs. May 26, 2014, two Kenyan soldiers in a supply convoy were killed in an ambush by suspected Al-Shabaab militants near the town of Lamu in an area close to the Ras Kamboni region. Kenyan officials confirm that some other Kenyan soldiers were wounded while one militant was killed. They also state that they are in pursuit of the attackers, who fled after the ambush. June 13, 2014, a roadside bomb that was detonated near the town of Bulo Bird injured six Amisom and Somali soldiers. At least three of the casualties were from the Djibouti contingent, and were airlifted to Mogadishu for medical attention after the attack. June 26, 2014, militants from Al-Shabaab launched an attack on the town of Bulo Bird, which has been besieged by militants and cut off from road access since it came under government control in March. Witnesses say that the attack lasted 30 minutes and began when militants stormed a military base established in a hotel complex before they were driven back by the combined force of the SNA and Amisom. Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility and claimed to have killed six soldiers while the O-commander, Ibrahim Ali, stated that two Djiboutian peacekeepers, one civilian, and two militants were killed. August 16, 2014, Amisom, accompanied by FGS forces, launched Operation Indian Ocean against Al-Shabaab held pockets in the countryside. August 25, 2014, Ethiopian Amisom troops assisted by Somali government forces captured Tiyeglo from Al-Shabaab, as part of Operation Indian Ocean. Situated around 530 km northeast of Mogadishu along the main road linking Beledwane and Baidoa, Tieglo previously served as a base for the insurgent group. Witnesses indicate that the Al-Shabaab fighters gave no resistance during the raid, fleeing instead to adjacent forested areas. However, Al-Shabaab planted roadside explosive devices before fleeing. According to Amisom, the successful military operation deprives the insurgent group of high extortion fees that it would previously charge to vehicles traveling along the town's principal road. The siege also now gives the Somali government full control of the Bakul province. September 2014, Human Rights Watch published a report accusing a few soldiers within the Ugandan and Burundian contingents of Amisom of sexual misconduct on two of the mission's bases in Mogadishu. The African Union issued an official statement denying the allegations, which it characterized as isolated cases largely involving a single rogue soldier. It also pledged to investigate the charges, and indicated that a number of internal mechanisms had been instituted to prevent, mitigate and discipline any transgressions. September 6, 2014, Somali government forces assisted by Ethiopian troops seize El Garas in the Galgaduid province from Al-Shabaab. According to the Somali military spokesman Mohamed Karia Roble, the village was a main base for the insurgent group, serving as both a springboard from which it would launch attacks and a supply storage area. September 12, 2014, Ugandan and Kenyan Amisom forces conduct security operations in Lagta Berta in Lower Juba, where Al-Shabaab had established two bases after vacating Barawe. The militant group incurs significant fatalities during the raid, including foreign insurgents, and a number of its fighters are also injured. The attack destroys the Al-Shabaab hideout facility. 
September 13, 2014, Somali government forces and Amisom troops capture Abori, Mokokori, Yasuman and Muz Gil villages in the Balobarte district from Al-Shabaab. The militants mount no resistance. Additionally, Somali government forces and Amisom troops seize Abutu Beri, Ceel Shiel, Karaale and Kawada villages in the Galgaduid province's Elbur district from Al-Shabaab. December 18, 2014, the Sierra Leonean contingent 850 troops leaves Amisom and is not replaced. Main reason for their departure is the Ebola outbreak in their home country. During their stay in Somalia the Sierra Leone troops suffered one dead and six wounded. They were based in Kismayo. In response, Ethiopia has offered to replace the contingent from Sierra Leone with Ethiopian reinforcements. December 26, 2014, eight Al-Shabaab militants, dressed in Somali uniforms, launched an attack on an Amisom base near Mogadishu International Airport, which is also home to a United Nations office and several embassies. All militants were killed while five Amisom peacekeepers and one foreign contractor was killed. 2015 March 21, 2015, Somali National Army forces and Amisom troops launch a security sweep in the Bulo Bird district to clear an Al-Shabaab blockade in the area. The cleanup operation commences in Baladwain, with the joint forces removing militants from settlements on both sides of the main road leading towards the district center. Casualties include around five SNA troops and one Amisom soldier. Local officials do not issue a statement pending arrival at Bulo Bird. April 19, 2015, Al-Shabaab insurgents attack Kenyan Amisom troops in the southern Delbio area of Somalia. The insurgents reportedly shoot at the Kenyan soldier's vehicle, with a gunfight ensuing. Amisom fatalities include three dead troops. Officials indicate that eight wounded Amisom soldiers are also being transported to Nairobi for treatment. The militants reportedly retreat into the forest. Al-Shabaab also attack Amisom troops that are garrisoned between Lego and Baladogal. According to Amisom Colonel Paul Naguna, three soldiers are killed in the ensuing skirmish. He adds that the Somali National Army and Amisom are endeavoring to liberate the remaining areas under insurgent control, with Al-Shabaab in a much weaker state than only two years prior. June 26, 2015, at least 50 Burundian soldiers with potential excesses of over 70 were reported killed in an attack on their base by Al-Shabaab. The attack occurred in Ligo near the capital of Mangadishu. It is stated that Amisom was preparing for an offensive in the region while Al-Shabaab was bringing in reinforcements to counter it. September 1, 2015, between 20 to 50 Amisom peacekeepers are killed after the Janail base, 90 kilometers 55 miles southeast of the capital, is overrun by Al-Shabaab militants. After bombing a bridge to eliminate a potential escape route and breaching the gate with a car bomb, Al-Shabaab militants were able to enter and take over the base. Amisom peacekeepers were stated to have withdrawn. After looting the base of weaponry, the militants withdrew and Amisom troops were seen retaking the area. There have also been reports of troops taken captive during the assault. 2016 On 15 January a Kenyan company base at El Ad, manned by a detachment of nine battalion Kenya rifles, was overrun by Al-Shabaab. Several soldiers were captured, including Private Leonard Mangi who was later murdered by the terrorist group in August 2017. Reports of casualties among the KDF detachment were confused but a later report suggested around 150 Kenyan soldiers died in the attack, with some of their bodies being dragged publicly through the streets of nearby towns by the terrorists. On 19 March 2016 two Kenyan soldiers were killed and five others wounded when their convoy was ambushed by terrorists in Lower Juba. During the engagement 21 Al-Shabaab fighters were reported killed. Al-Shabaab lost several of their leaders to U.S. airstrikes during May 2016. Al-Shabaab fighters attacked an Amisom base in June 2016. During November Lt. Dedan Karithi Karuti, 26, of 17 Battalion Kenya Rifles, was killed when the vehicle in which he was traveling was struck by an improvised explosive device on the Ware Elwak Road. 2017. 
During January Al-Shabaab released a video showing the murder of a Ugandan soldier, Private M. Y. Masasa, who had been captured in September 2015 when the Amasam base at Janaale was overrun by Al-Shabaab. On 2 January two suicide car bombs targeted a security checkpoint near the airport and a hotel. On 4 January three UN soldiers were wounded by an explosion near their headquarters in Mogadishu. On 24 January an attack on a hotel in Mogadishu left 28 people dead. On 25 January at least 25 people were killed in an Al-Shabaab suicide assault on the Somali parliament building. Two suicide car bombs were used in the assault. On 27 January a Kenyan base near Kulbayo town in the lower Juba region was attacked by Al-Shabaab. According to some reports the base, manned by members of 15 battalion Kenya rifles, was overrun and up to 50 Kenyans killed. Kenyan reports say the base was successfully defended and put their death toll at 9. On 2 February a civilian was injured when a car bomb exploded near his house. On 19 February a car bomb detonated at a Mogadishu market, killing at least 30 people. On 27 February a number of Somali National Army SNA soldiers were wounded by a car bomb. On 28 February a Somali government official was assassinated when an IED fitted under the driver's seat of his car exploded. On 2 March it was announced that at least 57 Al-Shabaab fighters had been killed in an attack by the Kenyan Defense Force. The KDF spokesman was reported as saying, "...KDF soldiers operating under Amasam engaged Al-Shabaab militants at a location 31 km northwest of Afmato, close to Subo Center using artillery fire and supported by helicopter gunships." On 12 March a Somali journalist survived an assassination attempt after an IED fitted to his car exploded. On 13 March a Somali military base in Mogadishu was targeted by a car bomb, killing three and wounding five. On 13 March a popular hotel was targeted, leaving six dead. On 21 March ten people were killed and twelve others wounded when a car bomb detonated at a security checkpoint. On 24 March a car bomb targeted a popular café and hotel near the presidential palace. On 27 March it was announced that 31 Al-Shabaab fighters had been killed during KDF raids on two bases. On 5 April 5 eight people were killed outside the Ministry of Youth and Sports headquarters by a car bomb. On 9 April a suicide bomber in a vehicle unsuccessfully targeted the new SNA commander, General Mohamed Ahmed Jimail, as his convoy left a military base in Mogadishu. Fifteen SNA soldiers were killed, including several high-ranking officers, and 20 others were wounded in the attack. On 10 April 2017 Kenyan sources announced that 15 Al-Shabaab fighters had been killed when their camp 4 km west of Kadama, and approximately 104 km from El Wak, was shelled and then assaulted. On 19 April a Djibouti soldier was killed by a member of the SNA following an argument in Bula Burt town, Hiran region. On 7 May a Somali intelligence official survived an assassination attempt after an IED fitted to his car exploded on Maka al-Mukarama Street, Mogadishu. On 8 May a café on Maka al-Mukarama Street, Mogadishu, was targeted by a car bomb, killing five and leaving ten others wounded. On 15 May police intercepted and later destroyed a car bomb intended to target the National Theatre. On 17 May a car bomb was intercepted but later accidentally detonated killing three and wounding two others. On 24 May eight people were killed and 15 others wounded in a car bomb targeting a police checkpoint. On 14 June 11 people were killed in an al suicide car bomb attack near a restaurant and hotel in Mogadishu. On 20 June six people were killed when a car bomb detonated near a local government administration office in Mogadishu's Wadahir district. On of June a police station on Maka al-Mukarama Street, Mogadishu, was targeted by a car bomb. On 19 July a car bomb detonated outside the Ministry of Youth and Sports headquarters wounding one Somali intelligence official. On 30 July five soldiers were killed by a car bomb near a security checkpoint on Maka al-Mukarama Street. 
On 30 July a joint SNA, Ugandan convoy was ambushed at Goriowine in the Lower Shabelle region, some 140 km southwest of Mogadishu, as they patrolled the mogadishu barawe Road, a major supply route for forward bases. Reports of casualties varied but Uganda admitted to losing 12 soldiers with another 7 wounded in the attack. On 31 July a Somali intelligence official was targeted by an IED attached to his car. The official and two civilians were wounded. During August Al-Shabaab released a video showing the murder of a Kenyan soldier, Leonard Mangi, who had been captured in January 2016 when the Kenyan base at El Ad was overrun by Al-Shabaab. On 4 August four people were killed and six others wounded in a car bomb targeting the Ambassador Hotel on Maka al mukarama Street. On 10 August a suicide bomber was stopped at a security checkpoint on Maka al mukarama Street. The bomber escaped but the bomb later detonated, killing one civilian and wounding three others. On 14 August an IED fitted under a taxi killed at least one person near the Jazeera Palace Hotel. On 27 August a car bomb detonated injuring two people on Maka al mukarama Street. On the 11th of September a car bomb killed one person and injured four others near a café and hotel on Maka al mukarama Street. On 20 September a Somali intelligence official was assassinated when a bomb on his car exploded in Mogadishu. On 24 September Somali General Abdullahi Muhammad Sheikh Karora and his bodyguard were assassinated by gunmen in Mogadishu. On 28 September a car bomb outside a restaurant killed seven people. On 29 September Somali sources reported 30 people—12 soldiers and 18 insurgents—killed in an Al-Shabaab attack on an SNA base in Barir, 47 km southwest of Mogadishu. Al-Shabaab sources reported 30 government soldiers killed and 11 vehicles captured by them. On 14 the October a large vehicle-borne explosive device detonated at a busy crossroads in Mogadishu, killing at least 300 people. While Al-Shabaab did not claim responsibility for this attack it was widely believed to have been the work of this terrorist group. On 25 October a Ugandan soldier and two civilians were reported killed by Al-Shabaab insurgents in an ambush on the outskirts of Mogadishu which also left four terrorists dead. On 28 October five Al-Shabaab terrorists detonated a car bomb outside a Mogadishu hotel before assaulting the building and killing civilians. Up to 23 people were killed, along with two of the terrorists, before Somali security forces were able to end the attack. Three surviving terrorists were captured. A second suicide car bomb detonated near the former Parliament House. 2018 On 23 February twin car bomb explosions in Mogadishu killed at least 38 people. The first targeted the Presidential Palace, Villa Somalia, while the second bomb apparently targeted a hotel. On 23 February Ugandan soldiers shot dead three Somalia National Army SNA personnel in Mogadishu after a Ugandan vehicle convoy was apparently fired upon by the Somalis. On 1 March two soldiers were killed and five other people wounded in an Al-Shabaab suicide car bomb attack on a checkpoint 15 km outside Mogadishu. On 2 March five Burundian soldiers were reported killed in an Al-Shabaab ambush on a military convoy near Balad, 30 km north of Mogadishu. On the same day a suicide bomb attack on a SNA base at Afgoy and subsequent IED attack resulted in five SNA personnel and a suicide bomber dying. On 2 April Al-Shabaab launched coordinated attacks on three Ugandan bases, at Koryali, Bulo Merer and Golwain. Initial reports gave casualties as 36 Al-Shabaab killed with four Ugandan soldiers killed and six wounded. Subsequent reports from Uganda gave conflicting accounts of their casualties but it seems likely six Ugandans died. On the 11th of April U.S. forces destroyed a Shabab vehicle-borne improvised explosive device VBIED in the vicinity of Jana Kabdal, some 50 km northwest of Kismayo. This was reported to be the 12th air strike by American forces in Somalia during 2018. On 12 April Al-Shabab detonated a bomb at a soccer stadium in Barawe, killing at least five people. 
In the early hours of 24 April a Burundian base in the Arbao area, near Alasha Biahawas on the outskirts of Mogadishu, was reported attacked by insurgents. On 25 April a UPDF convoy in the El Warigo area, outside the port city of Mirka, was reported to have been targeted by a roadside IED which was followed by an insurgent attack. On 9 May a roadside bomb in the town of Wanalawain, some 90 km northwest of Mogadishu, killed at least five people when it exploded. Other reports attribute the explosion to a suicide bomber targeting a cot market, and say that 11 civilians were killed, or 10 killed and 15 wounded. On 10 May a second explosion in Wanlawain killed seven Somali soldiers and wounded a further two when a roadside bomb targeted the vehicle in which they were traveling. The casualty list was also reported as 10 soldiers killed. On 12 May fighting in the village of Hafoli, near the town of Jalaloxi in the Hiran region, between Somali soldiers and villagers against Al-Shabaab tax collectors left 13 insurgents dead. Also on 12 May a bomb in a market in the Balomerer district killed four civilians and wounded five. On 31 May a U.S. Air strike 50 km southwest of Mogadishu was reported to have killed 12 Al-Shabaab insurgents. This was said to be the 15th U.S. air strike in Somalia during 2018. On 2 June U.S. forces conducted their 16th air strike in Somalia for 2018. 27. Terrorists were reported killed in the strike near the town of Bosasso, in Puntland. Although the true success of this and other U.S. air, drone strikes in Somalia must remain in doubt as there seems to have been no ground follow-up and so no enemy bodies were recovered, or enemy personnel individually identified, no prisoners taken, no documents captured, no weapons or equipment recovered. On 8 June fighting was reported between Somalia National Army forces and Al-Shabaab when the insurgents attacked the town of El Wak in what was believed to be a continuation of intensified attacks over Ramadan. On 8 June a Somali soldier was assassinated in a market in Afgoy. During 8 and 9 June Al-Shabaab attacks on a joint Somali-Kenyan U.S. base 2 km north of the town of Sanguni led to the deaths of a U.S. Special Forces soldier and two Somali soldiers, with another four U.S. personnel wounded. The base was reported to have then been abandoned. On the 11th of June at least five Somali soldiers were killed and three others injured in an insurgent attack near Teed, 30 km north of Hudor in the Bakul region. On 1 July a mortar bombardment apparently aimed at an Amisam base in the suburb of Helene, Mogadishu, killed five people and injured another ten. On 7 July two suicide bombings followed by an attempt to storm Somalia's Ministry of Interior in Mogadishu left at least ten people dead and another twenty wounded. On 13-14 July Al-Shabaab attacked the police commissioner's residence in Baidoa, killing three soldiers and injuring four. On 14 July two car bombs were detonated in Mogadishu targeting the presidential palace compound. See also United Nations Security Council African Union United Nations African Union Mission in Darfur African Union-led Regional Task Force Multinational Joint Task Force Force Intervention Brigade Intergovernmental Authority on Development Islamic Courts Union Transitional Federal Government Somali Civil War Diplomatic and Humanitarian Efforts Topic References Topic External links Topic. Official website Media related to African Union Mission to Somalia 2007 -present at Wikimedia Commons <laughs>